Whoa, it's Wolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash building video where I'm going to start decorating my brand new layout that I made in the last video. I want to start decorating this ship part in this episode. I have an effect in mind, although it isn't mind blowing. I want it to lead on to another effect that I'm going to be making in the next video. I want these parts to link together, so I need to make the base of the ship before I even think about linking the next effect in. So in this video I'll probably be making a background, a couple of designs, a couple of pulses, just starting off the ship so I can really go ham with the next effect that I want to include. I'm pretty excited because I've made a couple of balance changes with this layout, it's very fun to play. I still suck at it, but that's not the point. We're in the editor right now. In this song, there's two distinct notes that I want to reflect with two pulses in the background that sweep from side to side. I'm being efficient right now by using less objects to cover this space. As you can see right here, I'm covering two blocks with three objects instead of four, using these thinner, scaled up 3D line objects to cover the space instead. Because I'm planning to use quite a few groups here, and I don't want to waste any groups or objects so I can try and prevent lag. So on editor layer 1, I'm going to set up a pulse trigger right on this line. I'm not too sure on the fade times and the colouring yet, but I'll figure that out in a second. When the whole background is done, I want it all to move on group 3, and then I'm using group 4 for the pulse right here. I'm going to be using build helper to extend them across the screen. I'm going to line these up next to each other, then click on build helper right here, which will set it to a brand new unused group. As you can see, it's went from 4 to 5. When you're copying lots of objects at once, build helper doesn't place your groups in order, but nonetheless it still sets them to a free number. That's the important thing. On most devices, the screen is 20 objects long, which I've lined these blocks up to show, but I've also included two extra blocks on the ends to account for widescreen devices. So I'm going to be cutting off all of these blocks that I've placed, and there we go. We have our background in place. I just need to make sure that it's all on group 3, which I want to use for the moving group. And I'm going to add the moving trigger right here on 3, lock to play X, and just follow it forever. It's going to be ticking don't fade and don't enter, just to make sure that it doesn't crack on the edges of the screen when it's transitioning on and off. I'm going to be using this RGB color picker right here, so I can desaturate this a little bit and make it as dark as I really want it. It's time to fix these pulse triggers. I want the brightness to go up just the tiniest bit and the saturation to go up as well. So now when I play through this whole line of pulse triggers, it will show a nice swooping effect as you can see right there. I have stopped the music right when the note ends. I'm going to take the last pulse trigger, put it in line, then select all of the pulse triggers and go to a line X right here. And now these pulse triggers have been spaced evenly so that it has that consistent sweep instead of it having patches in it. I've covered a couple of those editor tricks in a recent video I made which you can find on the card on the top right of the screen right now. I'll be making more videos like that soon so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Near the beginning I'm also going to be placing a color trigger that also has blending. I'm going to click the default button to see what the color originally was. I'm going to shift that to more of a pink-ish purple instead. I'm going to change the fade time to something around 12. So all in all, this background effect is only 253 objects, but it does use quite a few groups. I've got a small inconsistency with the groups now because I had quite a few of those lines copied in one go when I was using Build Helper, which had to be deleted in optimization which is why it randomly jumps up to 50 in these pulse triggers. If I go on next free, it'll actually be less than 50. On editor layer 2, I want to have some low opacity black glow that's waving up and down, which is another job for build helper. All right, so I've set up one of these strips. I'll move it up and down with these move triggers so you can see exactly where it's at. First, it moves down 10 for one second, then it moves up 20 for one second, and then it moves down 20 again for another second. These two triggers are going to be the ones that I'm copying and pasting over and over again to get that wavering effect consistent. So I start with one, copy, paste, align it, build helper, and then we just repeat the process again and again. This strip is 32 blocks wide. All of this is excess that can be moved to the left to stop the waves just being static. They can also move left along the screen to get a little feeling of progression there. Then I can copy paste all of this, flip it upside down, build helper again. I'm going to have to align this with the top of the screen, but I'm going to go unflip all of these move triggers so I can see what's what. 
then I'm going to have to go and flip all of the Y values because I want these movements to be opposed from each other on the top and bottom. Then once I add this to group 3, which is our current move trigger on the X axis, you'll see that this is waving up and down like so. If I just copy and paste the last two sets of triggers, every trigger on screen right now lasts for one second. In one time speed, one second is equal to 10 blocks. So if I'm copying these last two sets of triggers over and over again, I need 10 spots away from this position right here, which I'm going to do two mega steps like that. And I'm just going to move these triggers out of the way because I know that these are duplicates of the ones that are here. Then I've just copied them a couple more times. You'll see that this is an even pattern. And in fact, this runs well into this cube section. So I can just delete that. It only needs to happen two more times apparently to reach the edge of the portal. And now in playtesting mode you can see the waves, you can see that the movement is consistent and it ends right on this cube portal which is nice. I want to make sure that my layering is good right now so I'm going to select the bottom layer effect, put this all on B4, then put the wave effect we've just made on the layer above which is B3. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go to color channel 8, set this to 50% opacity black for now. But if I don't like it, I can just go into the RGB editor and change the opacity that way. Before I play test this, I'm going to place a background effect off trigger at the very beginning of the level. Then I'm going to select literally everything, set it to don't fade, don't enter. And I'm going to turn off glow in the edit object tab. And yeah, I'm actually liking the look of this so far. It's pretty smooth. I'm liking how the movements and pulses are interacting with one another. There's one more thing I want to add to the background which is probably gonna make quite a big difference. One thing I forgot to do was move it to the left slightly which I explained earlier because I've got these eight blocks of leeway right here. This is really simple to do. Just place a move trigger at the very beginning with group 104 which I've just added. About 15 seconds, ease in out and I just wanted to move 80 blocks to the left. There we go, it's that simple. It barely makes a difference but if you're looking for it you can see. And we're only 1,827 objects deep. Most of these are triggers, which I could use spawn triggers to repeat, but I'm just more comfortable with having them repeated as actual triggers, just in case I want to edit a specific loop of these triggers, such as the final one, which I'm going to edit right now to make an extended exit. So these blocks move extra on the Y to make sure they go completely off the screen to make the transition nice and smooth. Then I can go and toggle these waves off after the portal. It just brings a little bit of extra movement into the level and it makes the transition out a bit more seamless. As you can see, there's no waves on the screen, so I'm free to toggle these off anytime. To make these waves, I'm just gonna take part of this circle like so, delete the rest because we don't need it. I can just copy and paste this one segment of the circle. I can just piece it next to the other one like so and we've got a wave pattern that we can repeat over and over again. And if we want to fill the space beneath it, all we have to do is copy paste it and just move it down like so. The bigger you make the initial circle, the longer the wave will be in its wavelength. So this is just about what I can get away with. A couple of pixels off the bottom of the ground right here, and then it goes about two and a half blocks up. That's not too bad. It shouldn't take away from any vision. As you can see, all of these blocks are higher than the tip of this wave. So now I'm going to copy this, flip it upside down, and switch it around like so and just rearrange it on the top with the checked portals like so there we go just going around and deleting all of the blocks that sit one block underneath the ground line just so I can optimize the way that it runs at the moment I want these waves to be on B2 so that they sit above both layers of the background but the decoration will still show up above. I've just set up a move trigger to move them 120 blocks to the left for 12 seconds on ease in out. Group 105, that's taken effect right at the very beginning of the level. Ah, uh, I can see some cracks in the wave right now. I don't know if this is going to be a problem. I don't think it will be because I will have ground spikes covering that area. So these cracks that are showing through right now don't really matter. I've decided that I don't want these waves to be above everything. I want some ground spikes to be sat above. So I'm going to level these in with the background a little bit with the color picker method. They can't be bright because that looks ugly and they can't really be black because then the black ground spikes won't stand out above it. So I've got to have it quite a dark purple. I don't want it fully saturated because that'll look a bit ugly against the desaturated background. So I kind of want it 75% in the way, maybe a bit brighter. And I've also decided that I don't want it to move so fast. So I'm going to only move it 400 
to the left, which is equivalent to 40 blocks. So when this movement ends, or when I get to the portal, I'm going to pause this and select all the blocks to the right that will not make it onto the screen, which is going to be pretty easy because I set these to a different editor layer. There we go. I can just straight up delete these and the level will be pretty much optimized. They might not blend in at the moment, but once I put the blending screen in, add a couple more details, I'm sure they'll fit right in. Right now, I'm trying to level a blending screen using the RGB color picker. In this part, I want it to start off quite dark, and then I want it to pulse up a little bit, and then end off dark when you go into the cube portal at the end. I could do this using opacity on the color channel, but it's a lot more effective to do it with the darkness of the color with blending ticked because to change the color channel's opacity I would have to use a color trigger which is a lot less efficient than using a pulse trigger. On the pulse trigger I can change the saturation and stuff and I can also change the brightness in one go so it's a double whammy it's more efficient. So in a pulse trigger targeting color channel 3 I've pasted the original color into the box right there. Fade time is going to be 5 either end and I'm going to change the saturation and the brightness just slightly like so and that will have a big impact on the way that these blend together. There we go, everything is looking nice and mystical. I am actually a fan of those waves now that I've tampered with them a little bit. They don't stick to my original plan but they do work out which is the important part. On editor layer 5 I'm going to add some black blocks on B2. These are just going to serve as the base blocks for these objects that I'm about to decorate right now. On the editor layer above, editor layer 6, I'm going to add some objects that use the same color channel as the blending screen. These are going to go on B1, a full Z layer above the ones that are already there. When you tick blending on a color channel, that color basically acts like light, so the brightness and hue will stack. This is important because the brightnesses of the blending objects on this block and the blending screen will combine and make these blocks look quite uplifted. When select filter is enabled, I can single out a specific block type to select right now. For example, all of these layout blocks, and then I can just go and set them to group one, which is my invisible group. Then I'll also add these slopes to be put on one as well. These are clashing quite a lot right now, which is something that a little bit of glow can fix. On editor layer seven, I'm gonna underlay some glow that's the same color as the waves that I made. So I'm just lining the bottoms of these blocks with these glow objects. It's popping a bit. It still clashes quite a lot, so I'm going to have to change the color of that glow, I think. Or, if I was big brain, I could add this to the next free group, 106. Find the original pulse trigger, which is this. It clashes the most in the middle of this pulse. So, I'm setting group 106 to black, so that the glow still makes the objects pop out, even when the objects are most similar to the background. There we go, I'm big brain, look at that. Okay, after taking a little break from making the background to make some of the blocks, I'm ready to make the foreground. On T1, I wanna have some 50% opacity black glow that just lines the top and bottom of the screen. Then I can copy the exact same line of glow, move it down by one, put it on editor layer 9, keeping the Z layer the same, I can then change this to black, which I'm going to make color 7. Normally I make it color 9, but that's the color of the waves, so I've got to remember for this level, it's 7. 7, black, 7, black. And now I've introduced this color range, as you can see the bottom of the screen is much darker. The only thing is, this blending screen is still above it. I can now also drop this down to T1, I think. I'll add this to the moving group, group 3, and then just stick the exact same thing on the top of the level like that. Ooh, it's all starting to come together now. I like this. The waves are kind of getting covered by this black glow on the top and bottom, which makes these blocks stand out even more. And I like that a lot. This is super smooth so far. I'm going to die right now. To round off this video, I am going to apply the exact same thing that I did with the blocks to the spikes and the saws so that when I come to decorate it next episode, I will be fully prepared with nice open bases to work with. And to optimize it slightly, I'm gonna be deleting the layout blocks and spikes because the ones that I've added as decoration also serve as objects, so this is gonna be a bit more lag free. For the saws, it's just occurred to me that I can't fill in the space above the saw without overlapping objects. So the saws are just gonna have a small pulsing circle in the middle of them that doesn't cover the rotating parts on the outsides, which is probably going to leave a space around the outside that is black. 
but in that case it matches the ground spikes and I don't know why the blending layer above these isn't working it's because I didn't layer stuff properly there we go and yeah I think I liked it more before actually never mind which means the editor layer 6 can get deleted apart from the blocks and stuff because they're the good parts but yeah I kind of liked having that mix of black and purple in the blocks and the saws because it matches everything this is actually looking pretty slick, I like it. More detail is to come. Make sure you tune in next Monday for the next building video where I will be decorating this and making the next effect to transition into this part very smoothly. Thank you for watching this Building with Woolsey video. Check the links in the description, particularly the Build Week playlist and the Building with Woolsey playlist. You won't be disappointed. Like, subscribe, and have a good day.